You're about to watch my conversation with the CEO of Equido Finance. Equido Finance is a cross-chain decentralized exchange, bridge, and decentralized autonomous organization, otherwise known as DAO. It was a fantastic discussion and we learned a lot about his project. If you like the content, smash that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and comment down below with your thoughts. Also, be sure to check out our new channel, The Next Block, where David from Crypto for Change, C. Will over at the Passive Income Network, and myself get together weekly to discuss all things crypto, Algorand, and we have fantastic guests on each week. For all of that, check out the description down below, and now enjoy my conversation with the founder of Equido Finance. All right, we've got Paolo with us from Equito Finance. Equito Finance is a cross-chain decentralized exchange, bridge, and DAO being built on Algorand. I appreciate you taking the time out of, the, out of your day to come on the show, Paolo. I appreciate being here. I'm being invited by you. So. Of course. No, it's fantastic. I'm happy to get into it. Uh, so let's just start off with what is Equito Finance and what is your role within it? Equito is a, is a name and X built on Algorand, and uh, we use the custom platform that was bring on by, uh, by Uniswap, and uh, we apply it to our DAX. On top of that, we are more focused on the bridge side, so we also have a cross-chain, um, it's a, also a cross-chain DAX, so we, uh, right now we bridge Ethereum with Ether to, to Algorand without KYC and ML, and uh, this is what we are right now. We are expanding uh, to other blockchain and to other use cases. And uh, what we have in mind is to make the life of the DeFi user way easier and also to bring more um, people and also more, more liquidity to Algorand to, uh, you know, implementing useful tools um, as a DEX and also as a bridge. Of course. And, and you alluded to it a little bit, but uh, I want to ask, how does the cross-chain work? You know, so how does the cross-chain between Ethereum and Algorand work? And what other chains is Equido Finance focused on after, uh, after they secure the uh, Ethereum and Algorand bridge? That's a great question. So actually, um, our bridge works in, uh, of course, in both ways. So uh, right now you can bridge Ethereum to um, uh, you can bridge Ether to Algorand and vice versa. And um, we, we check if uh, we have two balls on uh, each one, one of it on Ethereum and one on Algorand. And um, we have an internal system that check if the transaction went through the, um, through the vault. Uh, we take the information from the, um, uh, from the transaction as the Algorand address. Uh, and then when we double check it and the transaction go through, uh, the rapid version of Algorand uh, uh, is minted and sent to uh, the user address. If the transaction for some reason that, uh, doesn't go through, then the, um, we do the rollback. So um, basically the Ethereum is sent back to the original users. In this way, we avoid uh, any mistakes or malicious act. Perfect. Uh, what's the second question? I'm sorry. Oh, oh, yeah. The second question was uh, the second part of the question was what yeah. other chains is Equido Finance looking to bridge to next? That's an amazing question because uh, right now we're um, working on adding the, the top um, RC20 to Argon, uh, not just for the use case, but uh, also to um, help the transition to to Algorand from other um, other blockchain users. So um, this is more for the community part instead of for the mirror technology. Um, after that, uh, we're looking to to integrate also here, and uh, uh, we're working uh, on the discovery for the usage for you know a useful usage uh, to other blockchain. So. Um, we are evaluating uh, different, uh, you know, characteristics that uh, blockchain must have, and uh, is mainly for a community point of view because we all know we, as you know, algorithm developers, algorithm projects, we all know, and also you, and that the algorithm has a lot of reasons why you want to come to algorithm, but uh, you have to be facilitated to. Uh, to move uh, your operation on, on, on the network. And we want to facilitate that passage for, for 
all, all DeFi users, but also to non-DeFi users. So for that reason, we are also making it more simple. And also for the communication, we are using very um, uh, simple way to communicate as the comics that we uh, publish every week. Yeah, absolutely. And it's really interesting because as somebody that really, uh, you know, appreciates the Algorand technology, uh, you know, it's it's always a question of, you know, why uh, why is it so that if Algorand technology, in my opinion, is the best, why is liquidity trapped elsewhere? And I am of the thought that uh, liquidity is, uh, it won't migrate if there's a lot of friction. And currently, or at least up until, you know, maybe, you know, a couple months ago and leading into the next few months, there's been a lot of friction on moving liquidity from one chain over to Algorand. And I think a lot of that is changing. And I do think a lot of the liquidity will eventually start to port over because of that. Because if there's a lot of friction to move a, a good amount of liquidity, and it, uh, then like, you know, some of these money managers are just going to stick with something that may not be the best te uh, tech, but it's just, uh, it, it's where the, it's it, exactly it's what they're used to. There's too much friction to move out of it. Uh, so you know any sort of bridge, and I know state proofs are coming. So I'm really excited to see uh, the level of interoperability on Algorand and and see if there's uh, a lot of liquidity that gets ported over and then stays here because they come here and realize like wow, you know four second transactions. We're about to get an upgrade to six thousand TPS. Uh, you know state proofs are coming out. A whole bunch of upgrades to the AVM. So. Uh, it's a really interesting time, and you know, projects like yours, I hope, uh, hopefully, will help pour over liquidity from these other chains and keep it here, which would be really exciting. Yeah, I, I totally agree. This is what we're working on, but uh, it's reasonable why the majority of liquidity is, I don't want to say trapped, but is on Ethereum because yeah. they set the standard, and the people are used to that standard. So uh, also, the DeFi ecosystem on Ethereum is fully built. So you, you can run into amazing tools as, you know, you have Remix, you can uh, write the and test all in a, you know, in a unique tools that is very, very useful for users, also for developers. But uh, I don't see that as a problem as far as we continue to innovate in the, in the, in, on this network. And uh, we have to facilitate the passages to um, we have to give users a reason. So yeah. uh, there, there, there will be uh, a point, and I, I think it's uh, already happening, that the market will uh, uh, reward efficiency. And uh, because uh, market rules are pretty much always the same. So efficiency is always uh, rewarded. And uh, Algorand on efficiency has a lot to say. Yeah, I would agree. And that's a good point you make too, that, uh, you know, you can create the pathway there, but you also have to create the reason to take the pathway there, which I, I do think is being built out currently, but I, I think that's a fantastic point to make. Uh, so Equito Finance is currently in testnet. Could you illuminate us on how that's going so far? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so uh, we're actually on the second version of the testnet. Uh, we launched the first set testnet on May. Then we uh, also hit with the, this bear market, and but the, we continue innovating. We continue fixing the previous issue that and bugs that we uh, found on the testnet. Uh, wasn't major ones, but uh, uh, it was good to uh, you know uh, work on it and deliver uh, a fixed testnet to to user. And we are still fixing things. So uh, so far we launched the testnet the, uh, on August first. Uh, so far we have over twenty four hundred uh, participants. And um, the testnet will will end probably around the 20, 21, so the third week of, of August. Then we will collect all the information, all the feedback, and we will fix it if there is anything else to fix, because we're fixing also things along the way to, uh, you know, show us, uh, show also uh, our users that we're working on it, and uh, um, then we will go into mine it. So. Uh, I don't have an, an hour date for the mine uh, because we, we have to see how it is going. Uh, we have to collect metrics and see how we are going to proceed on this. But uh, we're pretty confident about how, uh, how the testing is doing so far. Fantastic. And where can people go to uh, try out the testnet? And once they do, are, are there any uh, you know, feedback forms on the testnet where people can go and, and provide feedback if they run into any issues? Absolutely, absolutely. So um, 
to reply to the first question, um, you can go on our website um, and just click launch up and you will go, uh, you will be on the testnet. Also from the doc section, there is a guide with uh, all the explanation how the testnet works and also a video that uh, we try to do in a very simple and also in our style. From the testnet, uh, if you have any, uh, you know, or back to report or, or any feedback, uh, you can join our Discord or um, Telegram group, but especially on Discord, we have a dedicated section or de dedicated to, to, to collect feedbacks and uh, uh, also, our developers are looking also to to the feedback to to see uh, if they can issue at that moment, and uh, if not, it is solved in a couple of hours at least. Um, but uh, yeah, perfect. And for those Pretty listening, that on every our uh, socials or but Discord is the dedicated one. Awesome. And for those listening, that website is equitofinance.com. Uh, so, is there going to be a token that goes with the project? Are you planning a uh, you know token generation event sometime during mainnet? Yes, yes, we um, we're going to have a token. We're going to have a governance token. We can uh, of announce it because uh, we're doing also a contest for the testnet, and we're, we structured the contest uh, with a collection of NFTs that we are going to release very very soon that uh, uh, will allow the, the owner uh, to convert it uh, is convertible. So it is not convertible, but uh, if you own it, you can uh, you are eligible to receive uh, that amount that is uh, specified on the medium that uh, explain better how it works. Um, our token when it's, when it's launched. So to get back to the question, yes, we are going to release a, um, uh, we're going to release a um, governance token uh, because we're also planning to become a, a, a decentralized autonomous organization. So we're going to be a, a DAO and the token holder will have all the rights that, uh, um, you know, to, to run actually the DAO. So if you are um, a token holder and uh, every other services that is, uh, built on top of, of uh, I want to, I don't want to say that the, you know, there is a disinflated word ecosystem, but uh, um, in, in equity, in the equity services, uh, as the bridge, as the stable swap, as you know, all the other services that we are going to, to add, um, you can vote, uh, you can make proposal, you can vote on proposal, but also you receive part. Uh, the seventy percent actually, because the the rest of the thirty percent of total fees are reallocated um, into pools and into um, incentives, and uh, so you actually earn from 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 being a part of the equity about. Are there any plans to potentially add derivatives trading to the cross chain decks in the future? Yes, why not? We are not. Uh, um, we're not, not we're um, you know we're open to uh, to see uh, what tools are better to yeah. uh, not just our vision but also to from a user perspective uh, there is a things that I want to um, underline that uh, uh, we we don't want to build everything from scratch what we are looking for is to create cooperation in the ecosystem and not just in algorithm but also with other chains and also with other projects because there is a lot of value out there and uh, we're not that uh, you know we, we can build everything by ourselves and uh, yeah. we can be a collector of services we can be uh, you know uh, it will benefit all the entire ecosystem to to uh, you know be focused on what we're doing and uh, if everybody does that and we can offer a better solution to users uh, I, I will i think it will benefit all, the, the entire you know, not just the, the algorithm DeFi, but uh, in general, the, the, crypto, the crypto industry. So, Equito Finance plans to use pricing data from Goracle, an Algorand native Oracle service. Uh, aside from this partnership, are there any other partnerships or collaborations users can expect in the future? I was just, uh, as I was saying before, uh, we're open to uh, collaborate with uh, a lot of projects. Uh, if are in line with the vision that we want, that, that we have, so that is to create a fully decentralized, but also a democratic market where 
basically everybody can access to it and can contribute and can be a part of it. So um, yeah, um, we're planning other other partnership um, also with other projects on other chain. And uh, the, the one with Algo Oracle, uh, we're not using that the data feed yet uh, because um, right now uh, at first we're on, on testing, and yeah. uh, um, but we will implement it. And uh, we also have a, a, a partnership with Algo NFTs, Algo uh, NFTs, the, the marketplace that uh, uh, is just great and uh, is where we are going to uh, issue all our collections. Uh, we're going to publish the, the collections, but uh, yes, Fantastic. there will be a partnership here. Yeah, they're a great service too. They, they aggregate all sorts of uh, fantastic uh, statistics and metrics in the NFT space and Algorand, which is uh, really great to go look at if you're trying to understand the growth of the NFT space, which, is, has, which has been tremendous on Algorand, but that's a, that's a topic for another day. Uh, you know, what has been the biggest hurdle building out this project? The, big, the biggest, I'm sorry. Yeah, what has been the biggest hurdle? Like, what has been the uh, what has been the toughest part about building out the project? Ah, okay, okay, uh, thank you. Uh, I'm still Italian, so maybe. I oh, that's okay. That's totally fine. Uh, <laughs> okay, so um, I think was starting because uh, you know, as I say, uh, I'm 22. I'm turning 23 this Sunday, and uh, I'm working actually on Equico uh, for the last three and a half year, and it wasn't a DAX, and it wasn't a bridge uh, at the beginning. So I, I, I had a lack of credibility and experience uh, in front of me. So um, the, the, I think the most hard part was to have the credibility to put a team together, to have uh, people that, um, you know, in, believes in the projects and uh, were, were willing to, to, uh, to come with me. In, the, in this amazing drawing that uh, it's been so far. And for, for the rest, I think uh, developing an, on algorithm is not uh, a problem. And uh, from, from, from the ecosystem point of view, uh, I kind of see that uh, there are a lot of, you know, all relationship for the first, I want to say uh, is from the first projects that uh, were present on Algren uh, for a long time, and um, they have seen all the you know the development of the ecosystem. So uh, being the new guy uh, that wanna uh, bring uh, new things out of nothing uh, uh, is always a, a, a tough move. But uh, uh, so far, we received just love from the Algorand community in general, and uh, that's just amazing. So uh, I'm going to say that uh, the toughest thing to, to do was starting. And yeah. um, so yeah. far, I can't complain about it. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, getting off the ground is always the toughest part. And, yeah. you know, doing so at, at a young age before you have that background where, you know, you could go to a VC and they could go, oh, well, you've done this, you know, X project over here. You did this project over here. Sure, here's some funding. Uh, you know, so it gets a little easier as time goes on. I, will, I do want to say happy birthday, by the way. Uh, but yeah, I mean, the Algorand community is fantastic. And uh, at least from what I've seen, they judge things based on their merits. So, uh, you know, whether... Whether there's the background or not, if the project comes out and you know it, it, it it's a good working project, there's you know there's no reason to criticize. You know, uh, is there anything that I haven't asked about that uh, you want to bring attention to to the audience? Whether it be anything on the roadmap that's coming up that we didn't talk about, or just ways people can get involved. Our approach is completely uh, different from other projects, but in general, our approach is our approach, and we we think that we, we want to develop. A we want to develop the solution first, and then we we're going to communicate. But uh, at the same time, I, I don't think it's that much to add. Um, our main focus is not the decks because uh, there's plenty of them, and uh, uh, I think that the community uh, has already already uh, a good service on that point. Uh, we're focusing a lot on 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 the on the bridge part. And also to to um, put other services and other tools on top of that. That X is just the, the the ground base. So where we are going to to continue building, 
and at the same time is is a needed service uh, anyway. So uh, yeah. um, I think a market uh, needs plenty of you know um, different solution also to solve the same problem. Um, but uh, I don't think there's that much to add in, in on top of that. Uh, what we're doing is uh, trying to it's not trying, but uh, I want to say try to stay you know, humble on that. But uh, uh, to to innovate and uh, to to provide users uh, useful tools. Yeah, no, it's a it's a good point as well. There are you know probably about six decentralized exchanges already out on Algorand, which I th which I think there are more coming out at, uh, as well. But uh, even though there are bridges currently, the interoperability problem is still. Uh, is still just that it's a problem. So uh, it's a it's a good point to be focused on the bridging. And I honestly haven't heard anybody that's in the bridging space talking about uh, bridging near an Algorand protocol, which is a, a very interesting endeavor. And I really want to see how it plays out. Uh, I just want to let my audience know that if you want to learn more about the project, we mentioned it once before, but you can head on over to equidofinance.com. You can read about the project. You can launch the app, test it out. Uh, you can find them on Twitter as well and, uh, you know, do whatever kind of research you have to do before you test it out. But uh, in my opinion, it's a, it's a great, it's a fantastic idea. And I appreciate you coming on the show to share the project with us and, you, uh, you know, answering all my questions today. It's been a pleasure. Pleasure in mind. All right, I hope you enjoyed that discussion. If you did, smash that thumbs up button if you haven't done so already. Comment down below for the YouTube algorithm, subscribe to the channel, and check out the description down below. Us over at the Next Block channel, which you should already be subscribed to, are trying to get to Dubai for Algorand's annual Decipher conference. We want to bring you on the ground coverage. We want to interview all the esteemed guests at this conference. The Decipher conference is usually where all of the vital Algorand information comes out of. So if you want on the ground coverage of the Decipher event, check Check out the description down below for ways that you can help get us there. And I appreciate everyone that stayed to the end of this video. We'll catch you in the next one. Thanks.